Well, you know, it's crazy. I remember I came out in 89 to watch the pilot of A Living Color being taken. Tommy mm -hmm. Davidson was doing because he's from D.C. and Martin was right, doing right, um, right. House Party. Right. And they said, let's go down to the beach. There's a guy on the beach that, that does shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm a young comic. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And I go there and you had that, because you did a couple times a day, I think you did, if I'm not mistaken, right? A couple times a day. I did five one hour shows a day. Okay. So yeah. I would go there and I saw you and I was like, you know, you up there, yeah, 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 that's what people are being funny. I'm like, who is this jive ass nigga up in here doing this? That's what I thought, but I don't know you that, okay? I'm thinking this is some bullshit right here. But I was starting to get enthralled with it because I was like, this dude is actually doing, like, because I'm used to stand up comedy. I'm not, I didn't see that kind of stuff. Going to people, joking, people walking by, you was messing with them and so forth. Right, all that kind right. of crazy stuff. Take, you know, shouting out to people. I'm like, what is this? I, I thought it was just some like vaudevillian shit, you know, that they're doing. But I was watching, but then I saw, I'll be honest, I saw the beauty of what you did as I kept standing there looking at you. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we, we were with the crowd. I was like, no, this dude's playing this game. He, he, he's he's playing, you know, it's not easy to be on top of shit every second, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hold up, this is some serious shit. And then I remember you. Before the crowd about to leave, you said before they get paid, you had to get paid before they left right. and stuff like that. And, and were you were you a person that had something like a, a snapper or something? Yeah, like the money grab. The money grab. Oh, yeah, right? I remember that. Grab. Yeah, I remember the money grabber. And I was like, damn. Mm -hmm. I just remember you did it, and then people would go away. You had a bag of money and shit, and you got it together and stuff. And I was like, wow. And I came one more time because I was there for like forty. I was here for like four or five mm -hmm. days. And I saw you down there get do it again. And next time I turned around, I moved out here. Right. And I saw you, and I, and you invited. I met you. With, you saw me somewhere. Mm -hmm. You were very gracious. You invited me to your house. You were yeah. living off of Pico in like a second level apartment. Right, right down through Roscoe's. You were right, in Brooks and right. stuff upstairs. And directly across the street from uh, Donna Shavu. She lived with her family directly oh, across okay, the street. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I go upstairs and I met your wife and uh, upstairs and I'm like, wow, you know, this is, you know, you, 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 were, you were one of the stars to me at, this, at that point, believe it or not, mm -hmm. you know, even though you just was at the beach, but she was like, oh man. And you invited me to your house, it was so cool, so gracious. I was like, man, do people do this here in Hollywood? They invite people out, they meet them, <laughs> to come on to my house and shit. I was like, wow. And I remember, I really appreciate it. I'll tell this last story I always wanted to tell people, wanted to tell you. Mm -hmm. The first time I did Def Jam, 90, 91, I got picked mm -hmm. to do Def Jam. I was nervous as hell. Mm -hmm. You know, we only had, I think it was, I don't remember, it was a five minute set, seven minutes set, whatever right, it was. Right. I was trying to find places to perform. And I remember the night before, you said, come here. I have a, you know, a place called Carlos and Charlie's. And yeah. I want you to come upstairs and do your act. And I did my act. And the confidence grew, you know, because I was nervous of trying to see how I'm going to do it. You were like, you, you, know, you were funny. And, I think you had like a Monday night comedy time. That was my first sort of. great room. Was that what it was? Carlos and Charles. Right down in Hollywood, for those who know, right in Sun, was it Hollywood Sunset? Sunset. Hollywood, it was on Sunset. On oh, Sunset, right in front of Right on the curve. Of, yeah, on the curve where everything is at mm -hmm. and shit. And um, black men, black people didn't have clubs, at least to me, not there. We'd no. be in the hood. No, we way over there. Right, there. right there. And that was and Joan Rivers' aunt and uncle. So Joan Rivers' aunt and uncle ran that place. Carlos really? And yeah, she was there all the time. And the next day I went to Def Jam, and the, the, the set y'all see me do on Def Jam, I, I said, being shot at McDonald's, spreading bullets around equally. I did it before. I did the whole set at his club the night before. And you can, I always appreciate it. Like, and you gave me a place to go, yeah, to work out the night before, because I, I was trying to find, that. yeah. I appreciate you remembering so, that. Oh, yeah. We did Politically Incorrect there, too. I just didn't know what it was I was, I was doing, else I would have been in it. I don't understand it. Why'd you do that? Why'd you get a Bill club like Mar that? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell me about the Bill Maher story. I'm sorry. No, it was just Bill Maher came there to do it with us. He, you know, Bill Maher right. was a struggling comic like sure. everybody else. And someone came up with the idea of politically correct. And we all sat around and we, we talked about it there. And then I actually did one of his politically corrects. I didn't know it would go on to be He's big, yeah. the huge monster yeah. it turned out to be. That was real be. time. It turned into real but, time. But, you know, I, I'll tell a story I never told on film, though, about, uh, you know, I lost the opportunity to be on Living Color because I stole a piece of material that belonged to Keenan. And I didn't realize I stole it, you know? How, how, how's that? Well, you know, I was doing my whole routine. I had routine, my, my major piece was called the Basic Colored People's Routine. And I would make fun of all the different races. And then I tied up by talking about how racism is a joke. Back then he had a joke about Arabians how they would grab your head and run into traffic. Mm -hmm. okay. And I saw him do that shit mm -hmm. two, three years before I did it. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, 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 the danger in watching other comics is you can watch another comic's performance oh, yeah. and later say it yourself thinking you created it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, that's a very real thing. Sure. I didn't even think about that anymore. And Keenan had stopped really doing stand-up. Keenan was now putting together the shows, he's putting together the movies, right? So I forgot it was even his. I didn't think about it. I did not consciously take his shit. Sure, 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 that. sure, right. And plus I need to. Right. You know, I'm creative. I could think of shit, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I had this great piece and it worked its way in. One day I said it thinking that I thought of it. I didn't think nothing of it. So I built it onto my show. It was part of that big routine that I did. And him 
uh, what's the girl who I said that lives across the street from who's a big casting director? Uh, Donna Shavu. Donna Shavu. Not mm -hmm. Donna Shavu. That was my agent. Oh, was Donna Shavu. But her friend who I said, uh, Robbie Reed. Robbie Reed. Okay. They were best friends. Oh, well, okay. okay. Robbie okay. Reed and Donna Shavu were best friends. And Donna was my agent then. And so Robbie was taking Keenan around mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. shop mm -hmm. in Living Color. Sure. I didn't know it. I was just at the improv with them with the second improv, the one ahead of Santa Monica, helped right, 400 right, people. Right, sure. And I was in there, I fucking kill it. And I watched them all walk in. And I'm like, man, I'm doing my best shit. When it was over, they walked up to me. I'm thinking they like gonna talk to me about living color. He said, Keenan said, nigga, you ever say my shit again, I'll fuck you up. Okay, wow. And he's sick something. And I said, right. wait, I'm sorry, what piece are you talking about? He said, nigga, I'm not gonna tell you the piece. Do it again, I'm gonna fuck you up. Damn. I said, well, dude, I'm not going to just right. stop doing everything I do. Right, right. you don't tell you me know? right. Damn. But then I went on and racked my brain until I went piece by piece systematically and figured out which was his. And I called, I apologized to him a dozen times. I apologized right. to his brother and everything they said was cool. But to this yeah, day, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. they have never worked with me on anything. I've really? never been allowed to come to any auditions of theirs, of anybody connected to the family. And it's really weird because in a town <sighs> like this, people will have a perceived slight. They'll think you slighted them and they'll fuck over you for 20 years, 25 years. They'll make sure they're friends to talk to you. They'll make sure you're doing because it's a clicky, clicky, yeah. you know, society. Sure, I, sure. I mean, the, the blessing that God gave me is Venice Beach. Right, right, See, right. I know right, 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 that right. I can go anywhere and talk shit and get paid. If push came to shove, I can carry my black ass back right. to Venice Beach and I will make sacks right. of money. In fact, I'm going back out to shoot it this summer. You know, we're building a stage that's look like a king's nice. crown. I'm gonna stand in the middle of it. It's called the King of Venice Beach. Well, yeah. well, 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 as you well should. But but but, but Keenan, you said you've talked to him, and he's told you personally that not, or people around him say y'all should be cool. Because I've had situations not with him, but with people that I've tried to talk to. Say we cool, and they say oh you were cool. There are people say they were cool, but I can still feel they weren't cool. So with Keenan, you you spoke to him personally. He still he said we're I cool, spoke to him and apologized several times, and to Damon as well. I think the first time I really talked to Damon in a long time, Damon always speaks to me though. Mm -hmm. He always speaks. That's one sure. thing they always speak to oh, me. Oh yeah, I like oh, yeah, They're yeah, not yeah. disrespectful. Right, they, right. they always speak. But there's a thousand shows they've done that I could have auditioned for. I couldn't audition for none of that. I was never even brought in for none of that. Okay. I have to admit, I did come in mm. for, but that wasn't there, but I did come in for South Park. Right. Uh, but. No. Nothing. You think None of this stuff. I can't. And Kenan, I, and, come on, Keenan, let that grudge go. Bro, I don't know if it's a grudge or not. I ain't, right. I, know. I ain't pointing fingers because the good thing is I'm self sufficient, so I don't need nobody. And that's the whole thing about the beach. Right. That people have problems with me. I never need nobody because I can do the beach. Turn me up a little bit. Turn me up a little bit. If you like that clip, hit the subscribe button or the notification bell. In fact, why don't you hit both of them?